Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to do it so that when we land we're going to have a rolling animation. So I've done it previously where we had a hard landing so the player kind of plays an animation for landing on their, their knees and their hands. Today we're going to do it so we roll forwards. So I've already done a kind of video on directional dodging and rolling so if you want that instead you can go watch that. But today we're going to make it so that when we land we're going to roll forwards. So now how I have it set up now is just when I land from a jump we roll and that's just simply to show it off. However, I'll show you how to change that so it's not just from a jump because you probably wouldn't want that. So if we jump and then we're going to land, we're going to roll forwards like this. Now you can ignore the line trace there, that was just for debugging and testing earlier. However, what we're going to do is when we land, we're going to roll forwards like this, which I think looks quite good. So again, if we jump off here, we fall, or well, if we jump, sorry. So if we jump off, we fall and land, we're going to get that. And ignore that sound effect as well, that's from a previous tutorial. I thought I'd say with that. Like I say, this is what we're going to make today, and if we go into a wall, it will stop us at the wall as well. We're not going to go straight through it, like so. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first step we want to make is we want to actually have our animations. Now the animations I'm using, I've got from ALS V4, which I'll leave a link to in the description down below, which is completely free. We have lots of great animations in there. It's the advanced locomotion pack. Like I say, we have this rolling one here and I've just retargeted it to the UV4 mannequin. What we want to do next is we want to right click on the animation, go to create, and create an montage. And we can leave it as that name as we just want an animation montage. What we want to do next is allow it so that we can actually use animation montages. So to do that, it's very simple. We just need to go into our animation blueprint. So for me, that's mannequin, animations, third person anim BP. And then here in the anim graph, we're gonna come out of the state machine and get a slot, default slot, connecting that to the output pose. And that just simply allows us to use full body animation montages and by default it will be full body montage. So we can close that as that is that part done. What we want to do next is we want to open up our character blueprint to do all the code. So for me that's third person BP, blueprints, third person character, but again for you it's going to be third, first, or whatever you've named it. So what we want to do now is we want to make it so we check to see how far we're falling or how fast we're falling, anything along those lines, so we can determine when or when we shouldn't play the animation. So to do that, I'm going to find some empty space, right click, and get event on movement mode changed with a new movement mode coming out of that and get an equal equal anim setting it from non to falling so essentially when we change the movement mode we're going to see if it is falling so when we go into falling so we're going to hold down b left click to get a branch with that as the condition the branch going into the event so like i say it's going to check to see if we are now falling if we are we want to hold down b left click to get another branch connecting that to true and the condition of this wants to be our speed. So I'm going to right click and get velocity and then right click the return value and split the structure pin as we only want to get it on the Z because we only want to see how fast we're falling down. Not forward, backwards, left, right, just down. So we're going to get the Z here and I'm going to come out of this and get a greater than or equal to float and this bottom value here is how fast you need to be traveling in order to play this animation. So in the example I set it up as 400 which means that when we fall downwards with a velocity of 400, we can play the animation, which again works for me just for jumping. However, you can set this whatever you want, for example, 1000 or 700, 500, anything like that. I set it to 700 for this example, connecting that into the branch. Out of true, we want to hit the plus variable here, so create a new variable, naming it should roll question mark. And I'm going to set that off of true, setting it to true. So if our new movement mode is falling, and we're falling at a velocity greater than or equal to 700, we're going to set it so that we should play the rolling animation. However, this is only going to do it once, so it's only going to check as soon as we get into the new movement mode, which obviously it will never be true. So what we want to do is we want to create a loop out of this for as long as we're falling. So I'm going to right click and add a custom event, naming this check falling speed. And we're going to connect this into the first branch there because we want to make sure that we're still falling whenever we check this so that it stops after we stop falling as well if we shouldn't play the roll animation. Then out of false of the second branch, we're going to hold down D, left click to get a delay, connecting in there with the duration as 0.001. They're completed, we're going to call function check falling speed. And what this is going to do is essentially just loop this so it will always be checking until either we should roll or we're no longer falling, which obviously is going to work perfectly for us. So now we've set it up so we can determine if we should or shouldn't play the animation, but now we also need to actually play that. So what we're going to do 
is that if the new movement mode again, if the event on movement mode changed, we're going to get another equal equal enum. This one is changing it from non to walking. So when we go back to our walking movement mode. And then we also want to get our should roll boolean that we just made here. And out of one of these, get an and boolean, connecting them up like so. So we have to be walking and we should roll. So if we go to our walking movement mode and we want to play the roll animation, then we're going to play that animation. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting the condition into the and, and the branch into the false of this first branch up here, off of new movement mode falling, checking that. So if it's not falling, we're going to see if it's walking, and we should roll. If we should roll and we're walking, we're going to play the animation. So what we're going to do is off of true, we're going to set should roll to false first of all, because we're now rolling, so we don't need it to be true anymore. Then after this, we want to play anim montage, with the anim montage as the animation montage we created earlier, which for me was LAS and land roll F montage. We compile and save that. So now that is going to play the animation. However, we're not going to move anywhere. It's just going to play the animation and that's it. We want to actually roll forwards. So doing that is very simple. What we want to do is we want to right click and get actor location. So we can get the location of the player where they currently are right now. We're going to right click the return value, promote a variable, naming this starting roll block for location. Connecting that out of play on the montage there. Then we're going to right click and get actor rotation. And out of the return value of that, we're going to get the forward vector because we always want to be rolling forwards in a forwards direction. So we're going to make sure to see where forwards is. Then out of the return value of that, we're going to get a vector multiplied by a float. And I'm going to set this to 500, which seems to work perfectly for the animation which I'm using. You can change this to modify it to work better for different animations. However, again, for the one I'm using, 500 seems to work the best and seems to be the best distance traveled because this is essentially going to be how far we travel. That would be this multiplier here. Increasing it will mean we'll travel further. Decreasing it will mean we'll travel less distance. And then out of the start and roll location here, we're going to get a vector plus a vector, connecting that into the multiply there. And what that's going to do is just keep us going in a straight line. And the reason we want it in a straight line is because we're going to create a line trace. And obviously we want to go in a straight line forward as well, obviously. However, like I say, out of the start and roll location there, out of the execution, we're going to get line trace by channel. Now, the reason we're doing a line trace is because the way I did it earlier was I just went straight into the timeline. So I set this value as the end location, which obviously got the distance we want to travel and added that to the current start and location. However, that meant that if there was a wall or something, we just go straight through the wall, which we don't want. So we're going to get a line trace to see how far we should and can travel. So the start and location, we're going to start and this addition, we're going to end there like so. so. This means that the line trace will start where we currently are and end where we want it to end, if not before, if it collides with something. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch with the condition going the return value like so. So if we do or don't hit something, the out hit, we're going to break hit result, opening up there and we want to be using location and trace end. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on location, promoting it to a variable, naming it ending roll lock for location there, connecting that into true. Then off of false, we're going to set that again. So set ending roll location with this one being the trace end. I'm going to close that like so. And what this means is that if we hit something, we're going to set the location of where it hit to be the ending location where we want to travel. And if we don't hit something, we just want it to be where the line trace would have ended, or does end, sorry. So that's the maximum distance. So this is the maximum distance here, the bottom one, and this top one is the distance it should be if colliding with a wall or something along those lines. And what you can also do is get a vector minus a vector here and just minus a couple of values so it doesn't go straight to the wall, it goes just a bit before it. However, I'm not gonna bother with that too much right now. But what we need to do now is out of the set any roll location, doesn't matter which one, we're going to add a timeline and I'm going to name this one rolling timeline. I'm not going to connect it into play. I'm going to connect it into play from start on both of those like so. So we get something like this because we want to play the rolling animation either way, but this is just changing where we want it to end up. So I'm going to double click the timeline to open it up, setting the length to be one as I want the roll to last for one second, which again, because that works perfectly with my animation. And I'm going to add a float track, naming this one rolling track like so. And all I'm going to do in here is simply right click and key to cut float with a time of zero 
and a value of also zero, so at the very start. Right click that, and change the key interpolation to be auto. Right click add key, time of one, value also of one, so at the very end of our timeline. So the time I have is one, because my length is one. I'm gonna right click that, change the key interpolation to be auto as well. And that just makes it a little bit of a smoother transition, so it smooths in and out of the movements, which just looks a little bit better. So we're gonna close the timeline like so, compile and save that. So now we want to actually move the character. So that's very simple. We're gonna come out of the rolling track and get a LERP vector. The return value going to a set actor location, which also goes into the update of the timeline. So whenever the timeline is moving through that track. A for this LERP wants to be our starting roll location here and B wants to be our ending roll location as we want to go from the start to the end of our timeline like so moving the player along there with a the set act location and now this should work for us. So we can compile and save this and this should work. So when we start falling, we're gonna to check to see if we are falling and then check our speed. And if our speed matches what is required, we're gonna set a boonie of should roll to be true. So we should play the animation. When we stop falling, if we're currently walking and we should roll, then we're gonna play the roll animation, which again is gonna do that the maximum distance or the distance it can go to whether it's being blocked by a wall or something along those lines. So if we hit play, we can test this out. So again, I'm just gonna jump. I don't know if the speed is enough. It isn't. So what I'm gonna do is jump off of here instead. The speed might be enough. It's not. So I'm actually just gonna lower this value just purely for testing purposes. So I'll put it as 400. And I'll also disconnect this code, which I made earlier, which again, you don't need to do. That's from a previous tutorial. That's just the wind sound effects. So now if I jump, it should play like so. So you saw that we jumped, when we landed, we got the rolling animation because we reached the maximum speed that we needed and then it played the animation going forwards as well at the same time. Now if we jump into a wall, we should roll just towards the wall, the wall and that's it, we don't go through. Now the camera is clipping through ever so slightly and that's again just because I'm going right up to the wall, not just in front of it. However again, I've shown you how to do that, it's very simple, but this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've set it up so that we can have a rolling forward whenever we land. So if we jump or we fall, we land, we're gonna get our rolling animation like so, which I think looks great. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.